Welcome to the Pump and Dump channel for another video, this time comparing two companies which are obviously not alike, SM Energy, an oil and gas exploration and production company, and we're going to compare them with uh, Nordic American tankers in terms of financial performance of the, the shares during the cycle, during a bull cycle, bear cycle, and we're going to you know, use Nordic American tankers as a prelude as to what I expect to happen with SM Energy in the uh, coming years, one or two years, as um, you know, the oil price probably has peaked and is reverting lower. So, um, first, I think I'll best start off with Nordic American tankers to set the the stage. So, going back to 2019, here I uh, made a video about it buying stock here at two dollars and change, probably two ten, whatever, and it was on the back of. Um, spot rates rising, the fundamentals were looking bullish, the um, the scrubbers were being fit on many vessels and therefore the supply was, was tightening, the oil and gas production um, was was going ahead well, the refiners were were taking in bunches of oil and, and then using that for refined products so the market was strong for the demand and when the supply kind of um, was fizzling, uh, fizzling away temporarily the the spot market started you know taking off and Nordic American tankers they had the right strategy at that point in time and as a consequence um, we can see that when the spot market started rising um, it was obviously a strong performer and even beyond when I sold here I guess uh, 365 or so probably on average it um, it kept going higher the prices I would not have paid and then it had a short term pullback and then we went into the into the uh, meltdown where the oil price was was uh, so low that it went negative um, short term and the story was that there was nowhere to put the oil so it wasn't worth anything and during that period of time of course um, an alternative to storing it in the Henry Hub or some other strategic petroleum reserve as the US they also took some into there the, there was the option to you know charter some some tankers like VLCCs and and Suez Maxes, and quite a few um, oil companies did so. So um, at that point in time, Nordic American tankers was experiencing the strongest bull market that uh, had probably ever existed in in um, in tanker rates in the spot market. They were getting like hundred, two hundred thousand a day, and you know they managed to sign some of their Suez Maxes for six months. Um, charters to, to just store oil whilst um, you know whilst the uh, the situation was resolving itself let's say and I had made a video probably in April when it was um, near the top of nine dollars a share explaining how it was trading or had been trading already at twice its intrinsic value from you know from somewhere here on out at twice its intrinsic value and it wasn't worth um, what people were paying for it and you know, I didn't, I didn't see any reason to buy it. I, I probably should have gone short or whatever, but I didn't. And then we started seeing the, um, you know, the 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 tank market weaken and starting its long-term reversion to the current situation of low tanker rates. And that's kind of why now we are here at dollar eighty-six, even though we were at nine dollars just a year and a half ago. Um, this is a reflection, as I just mentioned, of um, the company. It had the right strategy um, for the bull market. It had, of course, the absolute wrong strategy during the bear market, which is why they they went down as, as hard as they did. But eventually, you know, the market turns and they stayed true to their colors, uh, colors of staying mostly uh, unhedged without charters in the spot market. And when the, the bull market came, they were bringing in lots and lots of money. Now, of course, um, the fundamentals here deteriorated at the peak. Um, the oil production started going down, wells were being shut in, and uh, even though the um, demand was there to store oil in the short term, the fact was that the, the oil market had um, you know, suffered severely, and uh, the demand, the future outlook for the demand of oil tankers, you know, was very bleak. And you know, during that phase, of course, no one cared because they were making lots of money. And that's all you know they were looking at. 
and then eventually it just rolled over and it lost its um, its premium of trading twice its intrinsic value and you know now we are here now getting to SM Energy as a comparison um, and why I, I chose this one is relating to the the premium of course we can see that SM Energy um, they had the wrong strategy from let's say uh, 2018 when the oil price peaked at 75 and they had the wrong strategy of of you know their assets are not so good the the production costs um, are you know are a bit higher than the competition uh, they have quite some debt with higher interest rates and also they well they have a, a low share count which has been a positive thing for them but um, more importantly um, they they were not so much hedged and therefore when the market went into the toilet they uh, they suffered severely and I I did make videos back in 2019 you know probably around here when I was talking about companies like Antero Resources and Gulfport and SM Energy being trash and they were trash uh, going into the into the bust it didn't hold up very well and um, eventually though the market turned and you know this this was one of the the top performers because uh, there was this huge rebound in oil prices which um, I didn't think would come I thought we would not get above 55 for a year or two and then eventually we'd only get up to at most 75 like three or four years out and that was obviously wrong my assumption and that's why you know I didn't um, buy any of these very highly leveraged um, companies that had this potential to make 30x or 40x my money but anyway it's um, in the past and um, what happened of course is during this 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 run here at some point the stock started trading at twice its intrinsic value and I um, I therefore couldn't I couldn't buy it I kept track of it a bit and was following it along but um, I could never justify buying it and this is kind of you know where the comparison here is coming in it's looking at the the premium that develops during the bull market because of the uh, the favorable leverage that such a company has to the rising oil price and so what happened here of course is that um, it's gotten to this twice its intrinsic value and I am of the belief that it can only maintain that premium so long as the oil price remains in an uptrend where it makes um, you know new highs week over week month over month and quarter over quarter um, right now of course we are we had we had this we had this uh, flag formation from which we bounced but this um, this pullback here does not look like a flag a flag is kind of you know flatter I, I just don't see it going down to 60 uh, let's say 67 here and then just bouncing up to 100 or whatever people are projecting I, I kind of see this as the more you know likely path for you know for the oil price over time is to fall below 65 and stay between 55 and 65 for some time uh, that is um, you know a, a range in which most oil and gas producers can maintain their production you know their their profile their production profile with the reserves they have and they can some of them can replenish them quite quite easily at those um, at those price points and you know if there is a situation where you know the, this idea of there's not enough oil and we need more oil just you know falls apart uh, you know we could see it go into this lower range here of 45 to 55 no problem even if it's just for a spike down this is something that could happen and this is something to keep in mind of course we have some favorable technical indicator here with the RSI being at 30 so it's possible we do have a bounce here but it's um, you know it doesn't mean that from here we just continue going much higher we have to see at what price the oil price will will kind of get to a you know a higher RSI like we have had here in the past like 70 or 80 I mean we could have a big rebound to just 74 and the RSI could make a big move up and from there on out you know it doesn't have to you know it doesn't have to continue higher so that of course is the um, the premise here if um, we we do not continue higher then the premium here of SM Energy is going to erode over time. It's going to um, it's going to you know b 
be like Nordic American tankers if you look at the dividend uh, the dividend in the past has been relatively low I remember when I was looking here in 2019 they were paying like 10 cents I think um, annualized not a lot uh, for sure and I mean here with the oil prices uh, having traded as high as they have there is a good chance that they will pay a, a substantial dividend you know maybe a dollar a share who knows um, but the key thing here to keep in mind is that um, you know if prices do revert lower then the premium is going to evaporate and then we have to look at what the company is really worth and if we do a fair value calculation for SM Energy the you know the stock is probably worth between 13.90 cents a share and 14.58 and that's um, taking into account the 2019 and 2020 reserve statements uh, looking at them analyzing them and I came to the conclusion that you know even if the oil price is higher and they can add in some more reserves um, a lot of it seems to be higher cost and will not be accretive to the stock so you know the $13.90 is assuming you know the 2019 reserve profile and that's obviously you know not going to be um, good enough for the company to uh, increase um, you know value to shareholders so of course there is maybe an outlier that they can include even more you know oil and gas into their reserve statement but that could even be worse you know it could drag it down even more even though you, you might think that having more reserves is um, is a good thing but it you know it doesn't have to always be a good thing um, another thing to take into consideration is that um, that is assuming the current prices that we have in oil right now that um, projection of valuation which is you know no coincidence half of uh, about half of what it's trading at and um, you know if we do go lower then we probably will see it you know, the valuation drop to I'd say eleven dollars a share or so and um, the more important thing is that premium that the the stock has had for you know some time now because it's um, taken advantage of the uh, the leverage uh, you know not the leverage but the the fact that the the market has been rising so uh, so strongly so yeah if um, we do see something like this over the next coming years and then this is going to resemble Nordic American tankers and you know if you look at this in terms of a longer period than we see here of a year and a half if you look at this like in three four years uh, there is a good chance that um, you know this can dip down to maybe eight dollars a share in the next um, oil and gas price bust which doesn't have to go as, as low as the, the last one did in in 2020 but it um, you know it is what it is so that's um, looking at SM energy and valuations looking at uh, Nordic American tankers I thought I'd throw that in too since um, there probably are people who still are in the stock and want to have an you know an opinion maybe as to what um, what they should do I can't tell them of course what they should do as always I um, I put the disclaimer in that uh, it's not investment advice or recommendations to buy or sell stocks based upon my opinion I just provide my opinion some data and um, people can run with it or not so looking at Nordic American tankers here um, terms of their value right now I think um, I would put it at um, minus 77 cents a share which of course people might think that's weird that I put a negative number that's kind of what the, the valuation is um, in terms of an ongoing business um, that's you know of course the conservative valuation that we have right now is the, the low rates um, a key point here is not just to look at the valuation but also to look at how the cash flows progress over time and what they mean for the company uh, the company is unfortunately still committed to its um, exposure to the stock market uh, to the spot market even though the spot market has been terrible over the last year or so with um, spot rates in the last quarter um, you know in including you know like the average of um, all their vessels which is with spot and uh, some charters it's come out to like five and a half thousand a day in cash flows and they was both having low operating costs of eight thousand a day so you, you right there you're already losing you know money 
and then you have to take of course into consideration that you have uh, not just operating costs but you also have GNA and the voyage expenses uh, the debt that you have to take into account and you know using those things it's it's still in the 27,000 range I would say to 27 to 30,000 a day especially with ho higher oil prices um, you know the the um, the fuel costs are obviously going to be a bit higher and then they have to start fitting um, some sc some scrubbers or something to comply with IMO regulations so it, there's, there's not much good going on here um, if we look at it in two other perspectives in terms of um, you know selling the vessels at what they are worth right now in terms of amortized cost um, you know from when they purchase them then then you could put a positive value of two dollars and sixty cents a share I would say and you know then there is also to take into account that because the the, the, the tanker market is uh, volatile that there is a always a possibility that there is a shortage of vessels at some point in the future and that that causes rates to rise or if there's a war or something then that can also cause rates to rise um, so yeah looking at it in terms of an optionality play we have to you know put in some assumptions and say well what happens if charter rates and spot rates go up to like 60,000 a day what is the stock worth then and then you could say well then it would be worth six dollars and uh, let me just check again six dollars and forty three maybe and um, if you you know if you then take into account that they are losing bunches of money every quarter maintaining a strategy that can take advantage of such a move then you know it's it's probably going to be maybe mid fives at most and then you have to think about you know this company you know is one that will eventually run out of cash and go bankrupt if they don't um, do anything to fix their situation and so what you then have to take into consideration is as an optionality play what would you be willing to pay for a stock that could go up you know to six dollars and uh, something a share and then you know if you say well I would need 5x or 10x then you you just divide and you come to a conclusion and maybe you say well if it falls to 60 cents a share then I will buy it and that's kind of the camp I am in I would uh, I would not be willing to pay more than 60 cents a share for Nordic American tankers at this point in time especially since I I do not think the the tank market is going to recover anytime soon especially because what they of course themselves did uh, you know during the bull market here is to go out and buy new vessels and order some new vessels to replace older vessels maintain you know their their fleet profile and you know those new vessels are going to come in at some point in time and you know it is what it is you know it uh, it it, it uh, adds to the to the future supply even if you have some that are being scrapped uh, the truth is that you will have um, new ones coming in to replace them so yeah um, what else did I think about Nordic American tankers a oh, good thing I saw that they were doing is at the money mar at the market um, uh, uh, yes yeah, share sales program where they're just selling stock into the market at current rates to raise money um, of course this is a good thing when your stock is worth nothing and you are able to sell you know stock for two dollars and, and change um, you know during the quarter and you know with that said um, it's, it's always a good thing that they can maintain their 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 cash you know their cash inflow to offset the losses they have on operating their vessels with their strategy but also the key thing to keep in in mind is that every every time they keep issuing more shares at lower and lower prices it it also lessens the upside on in terms of an optionality play so I do think that um, it has to be 60 cents or below um, you know to take a, a punt on them it doesn't make sense to you know pay a dollar 86 you know it just doesn't make any sense so yeah that's kind of um, all I've got I guess um, keep in mind that I might be wrong about this but I I do I do think that um, after exceeding the 2018 high in, in oil price I, I do think that that's it 
um, that we go lower again and if that is correct then SM Energy with like 65% of its economic value and its uh, reserve statement is, is going to is going to go down a bit in value but uh, more likely um, it's going to lose its premium and when it does that uh, the stock is going to it's going to be you know falling apart so that's kind of how I see it might be wrong might be r might be right we'll see